Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Shoei Neotech 3 helmet. A new helmet from Shoei is always interesting, but the Neotech flip front is their most popular helmet in the UK. So this one's even more important than normal. We've had this Neotech 3 for a week in advance of its release. So as well as delving into the important details, I've been cramming in as many miles as I possibly could to find out whether it lives up to the hype. Now I'd say there are two main thrusts for Shoei's revamp of the Neotech 3, and those are to meet the new safety standard and also to reduce wind noise. It's not like the Neotech 2 had a big problem with noise, but Shoei has still worked hard to reduce it as they know how important it is for a helmet like this to be as quiet as possible. My time with this helmet suggests Shoei have done a good job with their revamp, but let's run through the tech info before I start running away with my own opinions. Much of the helmet is carried over from the Neotech 2. The shell is still made from Shoei's advanced integrated matrix of materials, and the shape of the main helmet section is very similar to the Neotech 2. It's been reprofiled in some areas, including near the ears, to try and smooth the airflow and make the ride a bit quieter. There's still a raised section just above the eye port here, which has been a feature of the Neotech series of helmets since the original was released in 2011. This allows Shoei to have a sun visor inside the helmet without reducing the thickness of the protective EPS material on the inside of the helmet. Weight is very similar to the outgoing Neotech 2. This size medium Neotech 3 weighs in on our scales at 1732 grams. We also weighed a Neotech 2 and that showed 1708 grams. I couldn't feel the weight difference when wearing the helmets one after the other. And if anyone out there can notice an extra 24 grams, then I'd be seriously impressed and also surprised. The chin bar opening mechanism will feel very familiar to riders who are moving over from a Neotech 2. You squeeze the button on the chin bar and just lift to raise the chin bar. It's once we get to the top of the operation that people will notice a difference. There are two open positions for the Neotech 3. The first one is the one that Shoei say is for putting the helmet on and for taking it off. It only takes a light push from this position to lower the chin bar again. But if you push a little bit further from there, then the chin bar goes into this second position. This seats it more securely in the raised position, and this is the one to use when you want to ride with the chin bar up. The Neotech 3 is dual homologated, which means it's been safety tested as an open face helmet with the chin bar up like this, and then as a full face with the chin bar down. Shoei recommends always riding with the chin bar down, and this is the way I prefer to ride personally, but in town it is nice sometimes to open up the lid and let some air flow in. I found the aerodynamics when the helmet was in the flipped configuration to be fine for speeds of up to around 40 miles per hour. Once it got to 50, then really I wanted to lower the chin bar to reduce the turbulence. But by the time I reach 50 mile an hour, then I definitely want the extra protection from a full face helmet anyway. As part of the sharp lab tests that are commissioned by the UK government, they record whether an impact in their tests makes the chin bar come open. When the Neotech 2 was tested, it stayed closed for 70% of the impacts. The average percentage for a flip front helmet that has been tested by Sharp as we record this is for the chin bar to stay closed in 81% of an individual impacts. Now there's no mention from Shoei about the closure being changed in any way since the Neotech 2, but it does feel to me like the spring on this new helmet is slightly stronger than the old one. It'll be interesting to see if the Neotech 3 is sharp tested at all. As we record this, it's been 11 months since they last released a rating, and it'll also be interesting to see if this helmet does better than the Neotech 2 in that regard. Okay, on to venting. The Neotech 2 was excellent for that, and the new helmet lives up to the standard. There are vents at the chin and also at the top with channels in the EPS to let incoming air flow towards exhaust vents at the rear of the helmet. This top vent dragged in an impressive amount of cooling air for me, even when I was sat behind a screen on a V-Strom 1050 with that screen on its tallest setting. The chin vent, which to me resembles the one on Shoei's XSPR Pro race helmet, does a very good job when the air can reach it, but behind the screen on that V-Strom there was no air getting there for it to draw in. Both of those vents will make the ride noisier, especially this top vent, but that is absolutely normal and it's just to be expected. Now I'll get onto the subject of noise in a bit more detail soon. One of the other significant changes for the Neotech 3 is the relocation of the visor tab, which is now in the centre rather than to the left. The visor has six steps from fully open until it comes to rest on the seal, and then pushing it down in the centre clicks it locked. Pushing the button underneath the tab frees the lock so you can lift the visor. 
One of the big criticisms of the Near Tech 2 was the lack of a decent cracked or city position for the visor. Lifting it one step from the seal would leave a 35mm gap, which was a bit too much really. Shall we have addressed that on the Near Tech 3 as long as you know how to use it? If you look carefully at the visor mechanism, you'll see an extra piece of plastic that wasn't there on the Near Tech 2. So as the visor lowers, the tab on the inside of the visor comes to rest on that new ledge, which gives you a 5mm gap between visor lip and seal. I found that was very good at allowing enough air to come inside to ventilate the interior without that air getting into my eyes and causing me vision problems. Now when I said you need to know how to use it, I find it easier to lower the visor into that position rather than to raise it into position. So I lift the visor up to step two and then lower it back down to the cracked position as it feels more securely seated in place that way. Now people sometimes comment on these reviews to ask if a visor will stay open in intermediate positions like this when they're riding along. I wouldn't normally ride and expect a visor to stay open, but I tried it on this helmet in the name of research. On the V-Strom 1050, I could do 60 miles per hour and the visor would stay open in all of the steps between fully open and fully closed. Whether it does that for you will depend on the bike you ride. The Neotech 3 also comes with a Pinlock anti-mist insert in the box. It's a Pinlock Evo, which is Shoei's name for what everyone else calls a Pinlock 120, and that means it offers the highest grade of mist protection that's available. This is one area though where I feel Shoei could actually improve. The edges of the Pinlock, just here, were more obvious in my vision than I remembered them being on other similar helmets that I've reviewed recently. So being a bit of a nerd, I got the tape measure out to check the distances on this one and also some of the other key flip front helmets. The Neotech 3 measures 28 centimeters from left bead to right bead. And the main competition for this helmet, which I would say comes from Shubath C5 and HJC's R for 91, so I measured those as well. The Shubath measures 34 centimeters from bead to bead, and the HJC is even bigger, it's 35 centimeters. So the Shoei's pinlock is seven centimeters narrower than the HJC pinlock. It was never a particular issue when I was riding, but if I had the choice of a 28 centimeter pinlock or a 35 centimeter one, then I know which one I'd go for. There's a sun visor behind the main visor on this helmet, which is another area where Shoei have also addressed criticisms of the Neotech 2. They fitted the QSV2 sun visor that was introduced for their GT Air 2 helmet. It's deeper than the one that's used in the Neotech 2, and it's got a bigger cut on the bottom lip to try and stop it touching the rider's nose. The old Neotech 2 sun visor wasn't deep enough, but this one's much better, and I couldn't see the edge when I was riding, which is exactly as it should be in my opinion. It operates on this slide switch on the side which runs very smoothly and there's a step on the final position to stop the visor inadvertently sliding back down into your view. Right, now seems like a good time to cover noise. Shall we have made various changes to try and quieten the ride down a bit? That sun visor switch now has a smoother trim around it, just here, to try and reduce turbulence in that area which is a really important zone. The gap between the chin bar and the main helmet just here is smaller to cut down the chances of draft and noise. The visor now sits in a smaller recess around the ear and there's a much smoother shape around here in every way. The shape at the front at the tip of the chin bar as well is also smoother than before. Shall we have then reduced the size of the attachment points for their official intercom, which is something I'll get onto in a bit more detail in a minute. There are also revisions inside to try and make life quieter for the rider as well. The cheek pads are longer than those in the Neotech 2 which gives a better seal around the neck and helps block out more wind. The fastening strap is very slightly narrower and the micrometric fastening buckle just here is smaller and sleeker, again to try and cut down the disruption of the air as it flows around the helmet. In my experience, helmet noise is never an exact science. The volume and the type of noise you'll experience will always differ depending on how you ride, what you ride and how you wear the helmet. But I can give you my experience on the bike I rode, which was positive about the wind noise. On the V-Strom 1050, with a pair of Auratech earplugs in, I found the ride to be very quiet on the Neotech 3. I wore a Neotech 2 immediately before starting this review as a refresher on what this helmet is trying to replace, and I have to admit I found that old Neotech 2 quiet as well. I'm not the only one, because a look at the customer reviews for the Neo 2 shows there are some people who think it's a noisy lid, but that the vast majority found it quiet. There are 116 reviews calling a Neotech 2 quiet and just eight calling it loud or noisy. At a ratio of about 14 and a half to one, I think that's pretty unanimous. Okay, let's move on to the interior. The Neotech 3 is just as plush a place for your head as the old Neotech 2 was. It has all the right materials in the right places. The bits that drag over your face and head a lot, like the cheek pads, are brushed on the exterior for softness. And the bits that tend to stay in one place, like the skull pad, 
are lighter to keep things cool and comfy. It's all removable and it's all washable. As with other showies as well, the fit can be customised by swapping cheek pads and skull pads from different sizes of helmet to suit your head. That's something that's best done in one of our shops if you can get to us, but it can be done with an online purchase if you contact our customer support team. There are recesses behind the liner for intercom speakers, and now it seems like a good time to talk about that intercom. There's a new official unit for this helmet, the Senna SRL3. The battery and the brains for that stow in this port at the back of the neck, and then two control modules attached to either side of the shell. We couldn't get our hands on an SRL3 in time to use one for this review, but we've checked the spec, and it seems very similar to Senna's system for HJC helmets, which I have used. They communicate through mesh and it's very effective. The speakers on the Showy unit though appear to be higher spec than that HJC system, so I'm expecting it to be a very good unit when I do get one for review. It's also smaller than the outgoing SRL2 unit, which is another way of keeping down wind noise in the helmet. So that's all good news for people who want comms and don't mind buying the official Showy intercom. It's not such good news if you've already got an older SRL unit because it won't attach to this helmet, or if you're someone who just doesn't get along with Senna technology. And I think it will be tricky really to fit a universal intercom as it's very busy around this part of the helmet and I think it'll be hard to find a place to stick the unit. Okay then, before I sum up, let's run through sizing, approvals and prices. The Neotech 3 is available in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are three shell sizes to cover that span. Helmets from extra small up to medium go into the small shell. Size large gets a shell to itself and then XL shares a shell with XXL. The Neotech 3 is approved to the latest standard for the road, which is ECE 2206. There's no rating yet from the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. If and when one of those is released, then we'll add that to the description for this video. In terms of pricing then, the Neotech 3 launches with a three-stage structure. Plain white and gloss black have an RRP of £589.99, other plain colours are $619.99, and then graphics are $679.99. So let's sum up. Shoei had a good platform to work from with the Neotech 2, and this Neotech 3 develops the concept in an impressive way. Build quality, as usual for Shoei, is excellent, and the premium feel definitely lives up to the price tag. The venting is very, very good. The new sun visor is a big improvement over the old helmet, as is the ability to have a smaller opening stage for the main visor. This is a high class helmet, and if you're looking to replace a Neotech 2, then I think you'll be very happy with what you find here. When I reviewed an HJC recently, I said it left me needing to update our video on the top five flip front helmets. Well, I'm glad I waited a little bit, as this Neotech 3 is an absolute shoe in for a place in that top five as well. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the showy Neotech 3 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.